1993, Egan Bark wrote a treatise on the ejection of strange donut-shaped fireballs from volcanoes. Historically, they're known as gorgons, but science was unable to explain their curious formation. As he delved deeper into their unique structure and properties, it became apparent their behaviour mimicked most of the sightings of UFOs. Sixty years ago, Winston Harper Bostick found that an amorphous mass of high-velocity plasma has a natural ability to convert a large proportion of its kinetic energy into magnetic energy, contained in an organised toroidal structure. He termed this structure a plasmoid. It has become apparent that these curious volcanic donut ejection structures are electromagnetic plasmoids. Bach's book examines in minute detail their bizarre behaviour. Going back to 1956, a milestone in plasma physics was reached when Bostick reported experimental results which showed that plasma, when created and accelerated to high velocities by a button-type pulse source, is shaped by its own magnetic field into a compact toroidal structure. Terming this structure a plasmoid, Bostick was careful to distinguish his own definition of a plasmoid as a generic term for all plasma magnetic entities. Highly structured from its definition as an amorphous blob, he subsequently clarified his definition as a self-generating shape body and a force-free, minimum-free energy structure, taking the form of a plasma vortex. According to Bostick, a rather surprising result occurs when the source is placed in a vacuum in an externally applied DC magnetic field and fired across the field. The plasma apparently has no difficulty in crossing the magnetic field. It forms an ever-elongating hollow cylinder as it proceeds across the magnetic field. Subsequent investigations were to prove that the plasma crosses the magnetic field in a train of paired, oppositely rotating diamagnetic vortices. Cubes recently demonstrated a similar conversion effect in a laboratory Z-pinch. The points of maximum pinch serve to accelerate plasma actually away from the zone of maximum compression. The high-velocity plasma then forms toroidal, helical and plasmoidal structures within the dense plasma column in the lower-pressure regions along the axis. A Z-pinch is apparently an efficient way of generating the initial high-velocities which result in the formation of self-contained plasmoids by the mechanism which Bostick identified. The volcanic plasmoidal ejection occurs at a specific point in any new eruption, with the plasmoid size varying vastly. Is this the classic dark glow arc stages of excitation of plasma, signalling the timing of ejection? For instance, Reports mention some only 20 centimetres diameter, while others cite these plasmoids at over 100 metres long. The plasmoid colour also varies greatly, with witnesses up to 100 kilometres from the volcano, such as Mount Redoubt in Alaska, noting dramatic colour shifts. From brilliant whitish violet to bluish greenish, gold, orange and finally to red, and infrared. They fly at a rapid speed, reportedly at above the speed of a jet plane, but they seem also to descend and rise, often in formation or swarms, and can fly thousands of kilometres from their origin. They can both attract and repel each other. So how do these plasmoids, UFOs, manifest at eruption time? The following is quoted on the Redoubt eruption in Alaska on February 15, 1990 by Captain Richard Swain some 35 kilometres away. The top of Redoubt lit up with an incredibly bright flash. 
the Cook Inlet and the mountains behind it lit up in daytime brightness. A fireball grew above Redoubt with huge tongue-like projections quite unlike the concentric fireball of nuclear explosions. Right on the hill of that fireball, an innumerable multitude of fireballs began to jet in all directions. They streaked really fast in the two opposite directions of Homer and Ackeridge. Their speed was such that the eyes had a hard time following the flight. They appeared like tracer bullets, not perfectly round as they disappeared along the inlet at perhaps three times the speed of a jet plane. Those balls went on for about eight minutes, at first many hundreds, then becoming smaller and fewer as time progressed. At the beginning they were huge and many, but after about ten minutes an abundance of common lightning strikes began in the eruption cloud. Important in the Swain video is Bach's comet. The sequence shows two huge disks hovering close to the horizon. They gradually divide into four and then eight and finally 16 disks, all in intimate linkage. These objects seem all aglow from the inside. They clearly fly northeast along the magnetic meridian and back to the volcano. But by what mechanism are these plasmoid UFOs created? If we look at the volcano from an electric universe interpretation, this may help. The massive production of molten magma, steam and possibly transmutation of elements and formation of new compounds suggests the possibility that we're dealing with a high energy Z pinch situation. Now a pinch is the compression of an electrically conducting filament by magnetic forces. The conductor is usually a plasma but could also be a solid or liquid metal. Pinches were the first type of device used for experiments in controlled nuclear fusion power. This pinch effect is the self-constriction of a cylinder of an electrically conducting plasma. When an electric current is passed through a plasma, a magnetic field is set up that tends to force the current carrying particles together. This force can compress the plasma so that it is heated as well as confined, but such a self-pinched plasma cylinder is unstable and will quickly develop kinks or break up into a series of lumps resembling a string of sausages, or in this case, plasmoids ready for ejection from a volcano or earthquake. Ejected plasmoids often form cylinders which shear apart like stacks of coins into flat ellipsoids. By what criteria are we convinced that most UFO sightings are in fact these very plasmoids? Well, firstly, they seem to possess an intelligence. In the being heavier than air, they rise and fall to the ground as though being flown. They seem to fly in the direction of either of the magnetic poles. They can readily change shape and pulse and blink with rhythms shorter than one second with light often several colours. This is a ubiquitous property of these plasmoids and this observation is often recorded during UFO sightings. Similarly, the plasmoid property of developing coloured portholes in their equatorial plane is classic flying saucer mythology. The normal plasmoid body is a sphere which often bulges into an ellipsoid with a short or long rotation axis reflected as a saucer or cigar. They draw closer via an electromagnetic but actual visible chain link. These bodies often develop a mist which is drawn out during flight to a tail. Here the visual relationship between comets and images of Matsumoto's mini plasmoids emitted out of electrodes but also showing a cometary tail and jets is interesting. This seems to link the concept of scalability of electromagnetic characteristics. 
Widespread witnesses from over the globe relate how volcanic plasmoids often then detonate after producing this tail. These plasmoid UFOs are attracted to the sun, but also other heat sources, such as reported at power stations and jetliner exhausts. Plasmoids, for instance, have arrived at different times to heated ducts at power stations. This would explain reports of pilots being tracked by a UFO. Bach interpreted much of the behaviour of these UFOs before the advent of the electric universe hypothesis and before the deeper understanding of plasma physics from researchers such as Anthony Pratt. To me, this sharpened knowledge of plasma behaviour seems to crystallise much of the behaviour of these plasmoid UFOs. Regardless, Bach's work clearly shows how these entities mimic the reported behaviour of our classic UFOs, whilst the Electric Universe Enlightenment explains much of their seemingly intelligent yet erratic behaviour. NASA has been slow to embrace plasma physics and its paramount status in the universe. It seems they are attempting to explain UFOs as extraterrestrial when a simpler explanation exists. Nevertheless, strong evidence suggests that most UFO sightings can be clearly explained as errant plasmoids or gorgons as the ancients named them. Will NASA actually provide evidence that contradicts Bach?